for me, being able to do what I love every single day, the trade-off is the fame. Like that's, that's the part that's actually the, I know that's cliche to say that that's the downside of it. That's the part that most people think is the thing that they want. Whereas I think if you do what you love every day, that's actually what you should aim for, basically. to play music I always knew I could make a living doing music I don't think it was I want to be successful I think it was I want to get by I want to I know I can play a guitar at a wedding once a week and be able to sort of pay rent I learned every word of it back to front by the age I was 10 and he raps very fast and very melodically and very percussively and um, it helped me get rid of the stutter. My relationship with music growing up was, uh, I think, just obsessive. I was obsessed. It was the only thing I cared about, the only thing I did, the only thing I listened to, the only thing I talked about. I did not care about school. I did not care about grades. When I arrived in London and realized that people do this as they're living and they're better than me, like much better than me. Um, and my thought process was like, okay, I can't, I can't out sing or outright these people, but I know I can outwork them. I know I can play more shows than you. I know I can write more songs than you. I know I can t take all my time and focus it on this thing. I knew a lot of the promoters at the open mic nights. I knew a lot of the singer songwriters from the open mic nights. There was a lot of fans that would come to gig after gig. One of my best friends now, Daryl, was this American fan who just just came to a lot of my gigs and one day I was like, can I crash? And he was like, sure. Like, you're not going to say to a 17-year-old kid, no, you can't have a place to stay. So um, I was very lucky in the sense of people uh, giving me sofas and spare rooms every now and then. I saw YouTube as like a, a, a business card to your live show. So I would film things and have them put on YouTube. Someone would go online and be like, oh, I quite like that song, I'm gonna see it live. And it sort of built up that way. I was selling CDs at this point and I had, I'd literally just kept cash in my bag. It was just CDs and cash from, from gigs. So I counted the cash, I had enough money to buy a ticket. I bought a ticket, I made my mum cry because it was the first time I'd left the country and uh, on my own. And I remember leaving and flying to Los Angeles, getting there, flying, going straight to Inglewood and playing on stage and obviously being a British kid with a small acoustic guitar whose raps in Inglewood at a poetry night, it stood out like a sore thumb, but in a good way. And one of the nights was this place called the Foxhole, which is Jamie Foxx's club. Jamie Foxx's manager was there and said, we liked your performance, we're gonna get you on Jamie's radio show. So I went to do Jamie's radio show and he said, really liked it, come to my house and use my studio. Went to his house, lived there for a bit. said you disappeared in 2016 like I didn't I was actually probably more visible than I ever was because I was out out and about doing stuff but I feel like if you don't post on social media no one thinks that you're alive it's a 
pretty song. I've never heard it before. It's a new one. I was a big fan of Game of Thrones, but I spent ages trying to get mates into it. I would literally invite friends around my house to watch the entirety of season one with them to be like, you will like this. And then obviously it became this thing. Oh, that makes me sound so like, I liked it before it was cool. She uh, was the year below me. All the girls in my year always just dated guys from the year above, and that was just how it worked. Even though, like, there's like a year's difference, it's just like, oh my god, he's a year older. Yeah, I do pop star shit. Like, I do hang, I do go to LA every now and then, go to wanky restaurants with people, and I, th you know, that is a side of my life, but I also live in the place that I grew up, with my wife who grew up there, with my friends who grew up there. It's very important for me to write my own songs because I think um, as an artist, music is obviously expression of self. I write songs because they make me feel better.